Hi guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a basic lithophane. I'm going to walk you through the entire process start to finish here. I've taken you from an image you might have on your phone or your computer to your final product as you can see here. I did end up making a lot of tweaks to my settings in Cura, uh, so I actually went ahead and uploaded that on my site as well, which I'll link to in the description below. Uh, but it's just another profile. I have it set for 412, and then when Cura 413 comes out, I'll update that and just keep that one going forward as well. Uh, there are just a bunch of little tweaks, which I'll show you some of them, um, just more of the larger tweaks uh, when we get to that point. Um, but it's definitely enough that I felt it was worth just creating a new profile for you guys. If you have any questions about the process, uh, make sure to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, before we go ahead and jump over to the computer, I'm going to turn off the lights here and show you what this guy looks like. All right, this was actually pretty hard to get on video, uh, but I'm doing the best I can here. As you can see, uh, the light is coming from the back and it's showing the image. I think overall this one turned out pretty good. I was quite happy with it. And I ended up using the settings that I have in that Cura profile that's on my site that you guys can download. But I just wanted to show you guys what it actually looked like with the lights off before we got into the process. Uh, so here you go. All right, guys, so the first thing we want to do here is convert our image into a 3D rendering. Uh, 3DP Rocks uh, has a great tool here. It's free. There are other ones out there. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, and you can do more with them. But if you're just looking to get started, uh, this is the one that I recommend. It works great. If you guys are interested in a more detailed or advanced video covering a lot of this stuff, um, I can do another video as well. But this is really geared towards just getting people started with them. And in most cases, it's going to cover everything that you need to know in order to actually print them. All right, so first thing we want to do is go ahead and go to the site, which I'll link to below, but 3DP rocks. And then we want to get our image, which I have right here. Uh, just a picture of my dogs. And then we're going to want to, uh, you can either choose the file or drag and drop it over here. I'm just going to drag and drop. And then it's going to create the basic rendering. Now you can choose what type of uh, style you like. Uh, typically, I go with the outer curve. I like this one the best. Uh, so go ahead and click on that and then refresh and then that gives us the starting point there now we want to go over to settings there's a couple changes we have to make uh, first one under image settings make sure it's set to positive image uh, that's needed for the light reflection to work correctly then you don't really have to mess with anything else here and then if we go over to model settings you can uh, make some adjustments here i like having the border around it uh, so i change this i think it's by default, it's set to zero. I changed it to three for the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, but you can play around with whatever settings you like. And then you can also change your size and stuff in here as well. So right now the maximum is 100 millimeters. If you wanted that to be large, or if you wanted to go 250 or whatever, uh, you can change that here. Um, for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna leave it at 100 because um, that's what I printed at for the one at the beginning of the video. All right, and then we'll go back over to model and go ahead and refresh again. And then that gives us uh, what we're going to be printing. From there, all we have to do is go ahead and download that. And then we'll jump over to Cura and import it. All right, so I got Cura up and I have the file that it created, our STL file. We'll go ahead and just drag that into Cura. And then minimize that. All right, so let's talk about some of the settings here. Uh, let me switch over to my profile for this. There are quite a few changes here from my standard profile. I don't want to go through and actually talk about all of them. A couple of the main ones I'll point out, but that's going to be your layer height. I have that set for really high quality, uh, so it's going to be 0.1. Uh, infill percentage. Uh, this one left a lot of room for debate when talking to people. Uh, if you look around, most people say set this at 100%, because if it's not solid, the extra gaps in there can uh, mess with the light reflection. What I found when setting it at 100% is if your printer is not completely tuned perfectly, you're going to end up with blobs and zits and that kind of stuff uh, just because you're going to be over extruding. Uh, so 99% worked out well for me. You might end up having to lower that a little bit based on your printer, um, but somewhere around 97 to 99 should be fine. Next one is going to be a print temperature. I would go based on what your filament is based on the temperature tower. I'm typically around uh, 200 or 205. I'm using just the white hatchbox filament. And then print speed is also another big one. I did slow things down a little bit. Uh, the overall speed, I just dropped it a tad bit, but some of the wall settings and stuff like that, I slowed down a little bit more. Uh, supports, obviously you want off. For adhesion here, you want either brim or raft. Uh, brim worked fine for me, uh, but if you have some issues with your printer or you're printing something really small, you might have to go to raft. 
Um, actually, I was able to print the first test one with just skirt, um, but it was questionable at times. <laughs> uh, it ended up being okay, but I would still go with brim. Now, there were a lot of other little tweaks that I made in here. Uh, if you want to see all of them, just download the profile and you can kind of uh, go through it. I didn't want to spend too much time here talking about it, uh, but I did make this profile available for you guys to download. All right, so next thing is we want to have this print on the Y axis versus the X. So we want to rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, the reason for that is it's going to put a lot less movement on your x-axis because it's only going to be going from here to here versus having to travel that whole thing. It just really helps with the overall quality. And really, that's all there is to it. Now we'll go ahead and slice this and uh, send it to the printer, whether you're using SD card or Octoprint or uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, you just send it over to the printer and get started. It does take a little bit of time. This came in about seven and a half hours, I think, uh, when I printed it last time. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. All right, guys, so that covered the process of creating your own lithophane. Uh, like I said, it wasn't very difficult. Uh, there's a couple steps there, uh, but using the profile I provided on Cura should give you a good starting point. If you have any questions about the process or run into any issues or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.